hello everyone. Today we have the famous Adam Sexton guy in a cube uh, <laughs> talking with us uh, from is it Expo Hall in? Um, I am I am in the thick of it. Yeah, I'm uh, right. outside okay. of the expo because the expo is too loud. But yeah, we're, right. we're on the floor okay. of Ignite. From Floor of Ignite, and we are going to talk about guy in a cube, Power BI, everything. Hi, Adam. Can you introduce, introduce yourself? Everyone, I think, know you, but yeah, let's, yeah, let's start. Hey, uh, so my name is Adam Saxton. I am a principal program manager on the Power BI product team, specifically the team that focuses on customers, so helping with adoption and blockers and things of that nature. And then I also do a little uh, YouTube channel called Guy in a Cube. A little, just a little. A little. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's actually yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a great YouTube channel. I think everyone watching this probably is part of that YouTube YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay. Um, if not, go subscribe. Yeah, <laughs> why not? Uh, so it's good that you point out that YouTube channel, Guy in a Cube. Let Let's talk about that. When it's all, all started, right. I think it was from the time that you've been working with SSRs, right? Oh, yeah, I was still in support at the time, uh, so we're getting close to uh, the four-year anniversary of it. It was uh, December 2015 when I uploaded the first video. December 2015? Oh, okay. Not not so long yeah. ago. I uh, thought, I mean, I thought four it years. had That's been a... like... I thought it had no. been like 2011 or something like that. Oh, December no, 2015 no, no. is good. Yeah, December 2015. Right. Four it years. was a massive, actually, let's say, work in just period of almost three years it's not three years yeah though. well no we're almost co we're coming up on four years so uh 2015 uh, wait what was it 2000, no sorry it was december 2014 yeah oh okay it was like I know, it's three but, years, but so. still yeah. it is a lot of work yeah 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 and we're we're over man we've done close to 375 videos in that time frame wow so, uh, yeah that that that's a big <laughs> big Fun. amount of content over there and you've got recently patrick helping as well yes yeah great. so he came in about a year year and a half ago and uh so we like doing the we love we love doing the tech videos we have a lot of fun with it uh so definitely we have a i i would say a unique style about doing it yes uh, so which is sometimes nice. people we get comments sometimes that it's not uh you know we, we, we should be yeah. more of the the corporate microsoft feel of videos and that, that's not what we do so. no i th i think this the style that you are doing it is making it unique because there are a lot yeah. lots of let's say corporate yeah. uh videos if people want to watch it it is already in microsoft Absolutely. youtube channels yeah yep. mm, that's great and 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 let's talk about a little bit about your content generation so uh, so how do you do this um, um because lots of audience don't know that you are putting yeah. the time from your yeah. Uh, not your office hours, from your extra hours on these. People think yeah, that you are uh, your, uh, your office work time. Explain that a little yeah, bit. Yes. So, I mean, we, we try and, I try and keep Guy and the Cube separate. So, uh, I mean, obviously, I'm on the floor of Ignite and we're talking about it. So, you know, this is my work hours right now. Uh, but in general, I, we try to do this outside of this. This is not part of my core day job, right? Same, same thing with Patrick. We have day jobs also. Yes. And so we've got we've to get work done. And yeah. So that takes priority during the day, and so whatever's left. Then. So I, I tend to get up around four thirty five a.m. in the morning. So I do wow, a lot of really? stuff very early, and uh, and then you know if I need to do it on the weekends, I do it on the weekends. And then you know even when I travel, it's you know I've got you know I go with my camera. So mm, let, let's uh, let's show that more. Let's say <laughs> <laughs> closer. That's the camera of guy in a cube. That that, <laughs> nice. that is. That is officially now my old camera because I bought. A yeah, new because camera you bought a new one. A lot bigger. Yes, right. that's a lot bigger. The so new one is not here. Uh, I think it's home. No, it's back at home. I I left for Seattle and it came the same day, so I haven't had any cuddle time with it yet at all. Right, and, and so, that is shooting yeah. uh, 8K. No, no, it's a 4K camera, same as the same 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 as this guy. Uh, lots, lots of so this 
new features. This will still be my travel camera. So I've already had three people reach out asking if they could buy it from me. I'm like, it's still going to stay in my backpack. And okay. uh, the new camera is uh, 4K, but it's bigger. It's better quality. So. Mm. Mm, nice. Mm, that's good. That's fun. So, so, so these videos that you create, especially, let's say, uh, so if you if you shoot videos yourself, you spend time editing as well. For those that Patrick creates, so uh, is Patrick <laughs> doing editing or you are doing editing? No, no. So Patrick, uh, Patrick has it easy. Uh, he records the videos, sticks them into a folder, and then they magically appear on YouTube. Magic. Uh, and his you, you never his know where daughter, the magic comes from. A little bit of magic. Yeah. <laughs> his, uh, his daughter called him out on that and said, "Wow, that's uh, uh, that's, a, that's a nice gig." Mm. So uh, I, I uh, one of these days we're going to get him into editing because I yeah just, I think you like, should start. Yeah. Well, it's it's not even a time thing because eventually I'd like to get someone that could just do the editing and get that off my plate too. Uh, but the, uh, the, the nice thing about knowing how to edit is you understand. So like when I'm filming things, I know like how, what the final output's going to be. Right. And so yeah. I can think about where I'm going to place things. And so mm. it's like, I, I know, like even when I'm getting shots of like the floor and like, if I'm thinking about how I'm going to edit it, so I know what shot I need to get. And, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, it, it I know will make like you where better, I can cut it. And, it will make you better in recording as well. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you just you know how the final up like I know I can cut that out so I can start here. And, you know, so yeah, mm, that that's editing, great stuff. Editing is good. Mm, that's great stuff. Uh, you had also a session this morning uh, about Power BI Premium. You had many sessions, I think, not just one. But yeah. So yesterday, Josh Kaplan and I did a session on Power BI Premium. Yeah. Uh, that was like performance and management deployment. And then uh, today, around lunchtime, I, ha I did a Power BI embedded session. Yeah. And uh, then Friday, I'm doing a session with Lukash. I can't pronounce his last name. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about the new workspaces and talk about admin and government governance, governance, governance. Hmm. That's good. Lot of yeah, lot of interesting contents. Uh, and then, uh, so I already yeah, talked with Josh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I already talked with Josh about uh, premium, uh, but you yes. are covering embedded as well. Let Let's have a quick chat about that. So, so what, yeah, what and, is uh, the new interesting features of embedded you can uh, tell yeah, the audience? Uh, yeah, Josh and I are definitely in the thick of premium together, and uh, so embedding that's one of uh, one of the things. Uh, Sergey on my team is also knee deep in the embedding stuff as well, uh, and uh, embedding is is fun. I, I'm I've got a developer background at heart, so uh, I love writing code. I love using the APIs, and embedding definitely gives you the ability to take Power BI to the next level, and you know either extend your your organization's use of Power BI, or for like ISVs, it's great for uh, allowing them to create applications for customers, and they don't need to know anything about Power BI. They just have these awesome reports right in front of them. And, Correct. Uh, so. Yeah. Correct. And, and, and for uh, audience you know, watching this, um, Adam has a great set of embedded uh, videos as well, talking about Power BI Embedded, how to get it working, how to get it started. Adam has videos almost about everything. This is <laughs> one of the good series. Make sure you go and watch it. Yeah, embedding, uh, embedding can be powerful. So when in the session that I did, one of the things I was trying to stress was that so everyone's like, oh, can I do this? Can I do this? And I'm like, look, we've got APIs for all of that. So it's just a question of what you can do in code with your application. So if you want to handle how pages get navigated, if you want to handle what the slicers and the filters are doing, uh, all of that can be done through code. And uh, you know, creating a layout that's responsive to phones and iPads and uh, you know, uh, TVs even. Yeah, uh, it, it is. That. It is so different from the very first early version of embedded that was like a oh, black yes. box. You couldn't we don't, talk with we don't, it. We now don't you talk can about interact that. almost yeah. everything. Yes. Mm, that's great. So, um, also talking about Power BI Premium, uh, we had a chat with Josh this morning as well about like those customers who are, let's say, on a shared capacity right now, and then they switch to Power BI Premium. They expect to see dedicated capacity, fabulous, yes. but because they have some like performance issues in their model or because they may have like massive amount of users they see it differently what is your take on that yeah and I so I think we uh, you know we enabled self-service uh, re uh, reporting inside of power bi that was 
that was the heart of Power BI when it first came out. And so it enabled all these people to go and grab a lot of data and mash it up and stick it into a report and stick it in the Power BI service. And because of the back end and how we manage it, we automatically scale to your needs and you don't really, you know, it just works, right? Yeah. With premium, you've got dedicated capacity. So you've got a set number of, you know, core CPUs and memory. And so when you move that over to premium, you know, if you didn't necessarily model your data correctly, uh, it's going to bring that really front and center very quickly. And so what we found is the majority of customers uh, incurring a performance related problem with premium, a lot of times it comes down to the data model, right? Just modeling out, you know, optimizing the model, optimizing your DAX, understanding how premium even works from a queuing perspective, so for refreshes with interactive queries. Uh, just a lot of people don't think about that. And I mean, part of it too is you've got these business analysts that are creating reports and it's this ad hoc self-service manner they're not like your classic data modeler, right? They're not, mm. they, they don't necessarily have that background or understand it. They're just kind of learning as they go. And we enabled that, right? So yes, uh, right. now what we're doing is we're trying to, uh, I think the bigger part of it is education. So education on how premium actually works under the covers and then education and assistance on, hey, we need to get you the right resources to understand how to model your data correctly and the impact that that really has on uh, the premium uh, nodes themselves. Correct. Like, 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 for example, people who are in, let's say, want to take photo, and some of the cameras is just like you press and shoot. Uh, it gives you a well, yeah, photo, iPhone, fine, right? but it's yeah. not a DSL camera that you can get really high resolution photo. But yeah. with that, you should know yep. how to do that. So that's yep. kind of the premium yep. as well. A person yeah. is using it or organization is using it, are using it, should have a good amount of, let's say, understanding how to performance tune their model and how to leverage those features. Yeah, That's and this directly ties to Power BI Embedded also because the embedded resources, it's the same thing under the hoods. Correct. And so you can get into the same trouble, although from what I've seen, typically the, the folks doing embedding, they don't have like these really large models because they've got a bunch of customers yeah. with smaller data sets. So they tend to be okay. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you get the, the larger data sets coming in and then we start seeing the, the pain points. Absolutely correct. Yeah, right. Uh, one of the latest announcements uh, in, uh, I think, uh, Power BI Keynote was uh, the XMLA and endpoints. Oh, yes. Which I'm oh, going yes. to talk about that in details with Christian. But what is your take yes. on that? I, I think that opens the doors to so many possibilities and it really brings Power BI to the next level because uh, I mean basically you've got a connection string right and so exactly. anything can connect to it uh, which what I'm really excited about is so now other BI platforms can connect to Power BI yes. and so you know you get these interesting things where yes it's you know competitor A I won't, I won't use names I'll protect the innocent uh, it's competitor A, and it's powered by Power BI. Correct. So, uh, yeah, uh, and, and, I, and a lot of tools can be created, like dealing yeah. with Power BI. Yeah, so well. like performance monitoring, things of that nature. Yes. Uh, we'll be able to uh, connect those tools. And, and uh, you know, another thing we want to look at is, and we're having a lot of discussions on, is from a diagnostic standpoint of, enabling diagnostic points so partners can go and create even more tools to help with performance diagnostics and things of that nature. Exactly, uh, tracking all that. like Part DMVs yeah. and things. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, partners are great at that and we want to enable it so that they can make those tools that are that help customers. Yeah, I, I, I think this this looks like a very simple feature, but it is a really powerful no, feature. Yeah, it's like it's, a leap through massive. advanced. Well, and what was, what was great too is like we've been talking about it since Business Application Summit, and mm. but I don't think uh, I, I heard a couple of people comment about they couldn't they couldn't really grasp the concept of it, right? Because mm. we're using this term XMLA, XMLA endpoint, and it's like okay, what does that mean? That's why I've always presented it as uh, we're going to give you a connection string. Yeah, when that, I say that, that people know more what sense that means. For people, yes. um, but uh, when they finally saw it, when Christian showed it on in the in the, the Power BI keynote session, it was. Uh, like the, you could tell people immediately understood at that point what this was. Yes. So that was, that was really great to see. Yeah, yeah, it, it is a great feature. Uh, so features coming in Power BI, let's say in the next six months, I know that you cannot talk about 
most of those things <laughs> is under NDA. But uh, yep. if you can talk about something, what are those? Um, so, I mean, we we just released a couple of big ones. So the aggregation features, the composite models, that uh, XML endpoints coming, all of these. What, what I'm really excited about and what we're really seeing is we're like some of the some of the enterprise things are coming, some of these bigger data set items are coming and everything's starting to coalesce. So I'm really excited to see like like January through March, like what that's really going to look like. Mm. Um, so I'm trying to think uh, just some other things off the top of my head. Uh, I mean, there's there's we're going to be continued improvement in Power BI Desktop. We talked about this at Business Application Summit. We echoed it in the keynote uh, was it yesterday, I guess, or Monday or yesterday, and uh, just improving the capabilities in Power BI Desktop to make it more like PowerPoint-like in terms of the editing and responsiveness. Mm. Uh, really exposing features that really help customers. So the new diagram view that's coming with you yes. know, display folders are here. Mm, yeah, yeah, all of interesting uh, things. Yeah, and so just uh, and even uh, one of the cool things that was showed at the keynote uh, this time around was the new uh, like the data quality uh, pieces in Power Query. Uh, yeah, that got that, a lot of reaction. That is and, fantastic. Uh, yes. it, was, it, it was put on. Uh, I, I'm sure. Uh, it was put on Twitter, I saw, that that was coming in October. So. Yes, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that is interesting because lots of people yes. see the column, they uh, yes. know the data set, but they don't know what is the distribution. They don't know, let's say, yes. how many of these values they have, how many null values they have. It, it's a really yeah. powerful thing. It's, it's very powerful. Yeah. It makes your power query like a data wrangling tool as well, not yes. just like a data exploration tool. It's more another step. Yep. And then the the art. I'm actually here. I'm in the booth uh, here at Ignite. I'm actually hearing a lot of things from customers excited about like the RDL paginated reports coming to the Power BI service. Yeah. That is going to like a lot of them are like, yes, we're ready for it. We want to have these, you know, paginated reports up in the service. Then we don't have this split between our reporting. We can have it all in Power BI. And so the I, I was actually surprised of how many people were coming up talking about that. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's good to see. Yeah, because then, because uh, SSRS then, is has been like used a lot oh, yeah. everywhere. But, yeah, and there's there's high adoption on reporting services and Power BI report server. So I mean, I've, I've seen the numbers. Chris is Chris Finland has talked about it uh, from time to time. I mean, obviously, I can't disclose, I can't say what yeah. the actual numbers are, but it, it's surprising when we look at it. We're like, wow, that is not what I thought <laughs> that would be. It's way it's way better. So yeah. there's a lot of adoption of it and a lot of usage. So. Yeah, 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 that, that's true. I think one of the cool things about Power BI is that Power BI came with all of these self-service features, uh, Power BI desktop, building report, publishing into the website, using Power Query, things like that. But the background of Microsoft with enterprise BI model is really great, like analysis services, that's... reporting services. And now they are also coming into this tool. It right. makes this combination so perfect. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we're enterprise BI is at our roots and we're bringing that all together to bear on power BI. And so, you know, we had a good run with the self-service uh, adoption and reporting and I, don't get me wrong. That's still going to be there. Uh, it's still a big part of what power BI is, uh, but we're, we're coming back to the enterprise roots. And so you're going to see things from governance. You're going to see things from, uh, you know, application lifecycle management, all of those things. And then, uh, bringing analysis services to full bear on Power BI to expose that to other people and then bringing the, the classic reports as well, side by side with the interactive reports, best of both worlds. Awesome. Great. Thank you for all the explanation. Uh, do you yeah. have any last word for audience? Uh, no, just I, I love the community. I love what you're doing, Reza. Um, Thank you. Uh, both you and Layla, the, you guys are awesome. Uh, so I just love seeing all the content. Uh, I love helping customers. So keep the questions coming. Keep the feedback coming to the product team. We we love to. Uh, we we definitely listen, and so it's it's very important that we we know which way to go. Uh, especially the team that I'm on. I talk to customers about the the features that they need and uh, whatnot, and that feature directly helps the output of the product. So keep it coming. Great, thank you. And everyone who is watching this, uh, make sure you go and uh, subscribe to Guy in a Cube videos if you are not already. Awesome videos, um, Adam and Patrick creating all for free. They don't get paid for that. They get paid for their Microsoft job, obviously, of course, but they don't get paid <laughs> for that. It's all high quality, superb content. 
uh, and hopefully we'll see even more in the future. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Not going to stop. Great. Awesome. Thank you for your time. Have a good rest right, of Richard. your Ignite. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you.